everyone, my name is Kathy. I'm the Digital Humanities Center Assistant. Welcome to the Intro to Font4 tutorial. Like the name suggests, Font4 is a free software for creating fonts. Why would you want to make a font? It's probably because you want to establish a sort of brand or set a tone associated to the text you're writing. Font making can be really time consuming. You might think at most you'll have to create 26 uppercase letters, 26 lowercase letters, 10 digits, and some symbols if you need them, but it can start to become much more difficult once you start to think about how the characters will go together. And through it all, you'll need cohesive rules to make your font look consistent. So if you don't want to invest all that time, you can also use FontForge to make a font from your handwriting, customize someone else's font, or make a limited font such as the letters of your name for business cards or resumes. When you open up FontForge, you'll see a little file explorer here with the option to open files or create a new FontForge file. I'm going to create our new FontForge file here. This is the main FontForge window. You can see here that it has all these different glyphs, which are the symbols, the digits, the uppercase letters, and the lowercase letters. When you click into one of these glyphs, so this here is the main glyph window. You can see this line is the baseline. That's where most of your letters are going to line up. The line underneath is the descender, which is the lowest point of your character, such as the lowercase g or the lowercase y. This is the topmost line. These lines on the side control the kerning, which is the spacing between the letters. You can move them around later. So let's talk about the toolbar over here. Here you have the select tool, which you can just click and drag to select things. The magnifying tool, pretty self-explanatory, but you'll have to use this to zoom back out. So this is the pencil tool. The pencil tool allows you to make strokes based on your freehand drawing. The tricky thing about the pencil tool is that it doesn't always connect your lines for you and they must be connected in order for it to fill it in. You can just use the select tool to move the dots together and that'll connect them for you. This is the grab tool. You can move around your screen here. The knife tool bisects lines. So you can see here that it's not connected anymore, so it's not showing up in my preview in the main font window. I'm going to zoom in with the magnifying tool, figure out where those disconnected lines are, and just connect them back again. Same thing over here. And I have to zoom out. And then once I've connected them, they'll reappear here. Here is a ruler tool. You can see that the numbers on the side are represented by pixels. Here is the pen tool, which is a lot like the pencil tool, but you have more control and you can connect these things automatically. The pen tool right now is set to bezier mode, but if you click this little spiro, it will go to spiro spline mode, which is a different way of mathematically calculating curves. If you're used to things like Illustrator or Inkscape, you might not really know how to use Spiro mode, so I just like to stick to Bezier mode. And these are just different kinds of Bezier points that you can create. Some create more sharp corners, some create more curvy lines. Here you have your transformations. This one is scale, so if I just clicked around, you can see that I only had this one point selected, so if I click and drag and select everything, then I can scale around where I had originally clicked. You can see that it creates a little pivot point there. This one is rotate, so again it'll rotate around my pivot point. This one is mirror, it'll mirror around my pivot point wherever I drag it. This one is skew, which is good for like italics. This one is 3D, so it'll move as if it was in a three-dimensional space. And this one is a little weird. It's perspective, so it'll change based on the perspective that you're viewing the lines. Here, you also have some basic shapes. If you click, in, click on this one, it'll create a rectangle instead of a circle. If you click on this one, it'll create a, a star shape instead of a hexagon. So those are just the basic tools within FontForge. 
The other thing to note that's a little unique about Font Forge is let's say I'm making a really rough letter A and I want to add a hole inside the letter. So once I connect everything, you can see that there is no hole in the inside. I create a hole and you can see that it doesn't appear. And the reason why is because I made this line in the same direction that I made this line. FontForge uses line direction, so you can go to element, so it's going clockwise now, I can click counterclockwise or reverse direction in order for that hole to appear. So at this point, you'll probably want to do a little bit of thinking and sketching about the font that you want to design and think about the mood that your font is supposed to elicit in the viewer. I did my sketching in an app called Procreate, but you can always use pencil and paper. In this project, I'm going to be making a font for a zine. I want to create three fonts that will work together to create a layered effect. I have the simple black outline for my main text, and then I have a heart design in the background for decoration, as well as like a highlight on top of those hearts. And those will just stack together to create a font. After you sketch out your font, then you'll want to turn it into a vector graphic so that it works with FontForge. Because I am working with layered fonts, I thought it would be easier to make this in Illustrator instead of FontForge. Luckily, it's fairly simple to create a font in your favorite vector graphic software like Illustrator or Inkscape and import it into FontForge. Just make sure that you set up your canvas correctly. I'm going to create new. You want to make sure that the dimensions are 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. Here I can also add in my baseline by going to view rulers show rulers. So dragging from the top, I can create a baseline where it is 800 pixels down from the top or 200 from the bottom. You can see that there. In my first layer, I'm going to import my reference image that I drew in another app, and I'm going to just trace over that with the pen tool. So place, I'm going to put in all my text here, and then I'm going to make it big and move it down to where it fits on the canvas. There. And then I'm going to make sure that all my glyphs are close to the side so that I have a reference for where each of these glyphs are being placed. Then I'm going to lock that layer and create a new layer for every element. So I'm going to create a new layer for the black line of the A, and then I'm going to create a new layer for the A heart, and then the A highlight, and then the same thing with B. I'm going to also make sure I name them so that I don't get confused later. And then I go in with the pen tool, and then I just trace over. The pen uses Bezier curves, which are just a series of points and paths in between them. If you're not familiar, check out an intro to Bezier curves video. So after I'm all done, you can see that I have all of my elements on different layers like this. I'm going to save the file so that I have a file with all of these things in it. And then I'm going to select all these other layers, except for the ones that I'm exporting, and I'm deleting them so that I only have what element I want to export first. Then I'm going to do file save as a .svg file. Here. You want to save as and not export as because if you export as it's only going to save this line information and in FontForge it can get scaled up or down or placed in a position that you don't want. When you save as it remembers the position it is on the canvas as well. Then in FontForge I'm going to go to my A, I'm going to hit File, Import, then find my SVG files, and then hit A. This you can usually just keep the same and then you can see that my A here is in the exact same position as my A on my Illustrator file, which is what I want, especially since I'm making a stacked font so that the placement of where the hearts and the highlights are are very specific. 
but now you can see in my main FontForge window that the preview is all filled in like a hole. So all I'm going to do is select one of the points of this inside stroke. I'm going to go to Element, Counterclockwise, and you can see that it creates that hole here, and then the same thing for that inner stroke of the hole inside the A. There. Then I'm going to repeat for the rest of my letters. After I'm done importing, I'm going to go in and adjust the kerning, which is just the distance between the letters. And then I'm going to check if I like that by going into the metrics window and seeing how it looks next to other letters. You might have also seen the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog because it uses every letter of the alphabet. And you can see if you like how they look next to each other. If not, just go ahead and adjust to this kerning in here. Sometimes letters that look good next to one letter is not going to look good to next to another letter. In that case, you might want to look up how to make kerning lookup tables, but I'm not going to go over that in this introduction video. So after I'm done with all the kernings, I just copied and pasted it for my lowercase letters. I decided to make my font all caps because it's meant to be like a title or decorative font and because it takes less time. So for my O in my original design, I wanted to make a heart for the love word in my zine, but I don't necessarily want that to happen for all the times that you type an O in this font. So I created both a O and an alternate O for when I do want that heart instead of the normal round O. So the way I'm going to add a extra character is I'm going to go to encoding, encoding, add encoding slots, hit one, hit OK. I already have one here. Then I'm going to right click and hit glyph info. I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it O alt. Then I'm going to go and do the exact same thing, importing, making sure I've, all my lines are going the right direction. In metrics window, I can also adjust the kerning, but instead of being able to type that character, I'll have to use backslash O alt. So let's look at the word love, hit backslash O alt, and you can see that it's a little weird between the O and the V, so I'm going to adjust that as well. And after we export, I'll show you how to use this glyph in Adobe Photoshop. So now we're ready to export. I'm going to go to Element Font Info, make sure to give it a name, a family name, and a weight. Then we'll go to File, Generate Fonts. You can choose between open type or true type fonts. Those are the two fonts that work with most operating systems. Make sure it says validate before saving and then hit generate. So when you hit validate, it might give you some errors. Right now it's giving me the error missing points at extrema. And that's happening because I have some weird bumps in my characters. So I'm just gonna ignore that because I do like the irregularity. If you have some different errors such as lines are not connecting, make sure you go back and connect those lines so that it ends up working. And then you hit generate and it'll save your .otf font. Since I also have my other two fonts, I just screenshotted a picture of the metric window with all of the different kernings and widths so that I can just easily redo them within my other fonts. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as my other font. I'm going to import all of my glyphs in and then export. Another thing I'm going to do to make things simpler for me is when I name it, I'm going to change the weight to bold for my hearts and then light for my highlights. And that way I can treat this whole font as a family. 
After I'm done exporting all three fonts, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those font files into my fonts folder on my Windows computer. Um, you might have a different process if you're using a Mac. After I'm done in Photoshop, I just have to make a text box with my text, duplicate it two times so that I have three layers, and then change all of my layers to what I need them to be, so either the highlight, the hard background, or the black outline. And I do have to do a little bit of lining up for my highlight. I wasn't sure how to fix that, but it was a really easy fix in Photoshop. I just have to slide it down a little bit, and then I can make the colors what I want, and I'm done. The way that you can get your alternate O or alternate glyphs is um, pretty easy in Photoshop as well. You just type out your text, you highlight the thing that you want to replace, you go up to Windows, Glyph Window, scroll all the way down to find your alternate glyph, and there you have it.